Welcome everyone to the next episode of the Permission to be Curious podcast. I, along with my co-host and guest, ChatGPT, are here to discuss today the value of endorphins and the price you might be paying with your attention. But here's the kicker. While we're riding this natural high, our attention might be sneaking out the back door like a ninja in the night. Think of your attention as the most VIP guest at the party in your brain. Everyone from tasks to distractions wants a piece of it. You're having a great time, but are you paying attention to where your attention is? Probably not. So is this trade-off worth it? Well, it's like deciding between a perfect slice of pizza and fitting into your jeans from high school. Both have their merits. The key might be in finding a balance, enjoying those endorphin spikes without letting your attention span shrink to the size of a goldfish's memory. Maybe it's about choosing activities that boost endorphins while also keeping your attention sharp, like playing a challenging game, solving puzzles, or engaging in a spirited debate. Who knew feeling good could be such a juggling act, right? <laughs> That is so true. So the reason I jumped on here like this, I, I'm all sweaty. I just finished a workout. Um, I decided to jump on here um, because I'm still feeling great from my workout, but I wanted to make a point. I'm really, I'm, I'm doing so well from the endorphins. Today was the first day I hit one and a half miles without stopping and I am delighted. <laughs> Congrats on hitting that one and a half mile milestone without stopping. That's no small feat. It's like your legs decided to become marathon negotiators and your willpower was the closing argument. Riding that endorphin wave post-workout, you're not just feeling great, you're practically on cloud nine where every cloud is shaped like a tiny trophy with your name on it. <laughs> this endorphin-fueled euphoria you're experiencing is a brilliant example of how our bodies reward us for pushing our limits. It's like your body's way of giving you a high five, saying, hey, nice job. Let's do that again sometime. These are the moments that remind us why sometimes it's worth trading a bit of our attention for that sweet, sweet endorphin rush. It's all about those small victories, isn't it? Well, it certainly is. But the thing that I've been noticing, ChatGPT, is that I like the endorphins I get from likes and shares and comments on my posts on social media. Ah, the digital age dilemma. But just like fast food, the question is, are they nourishing for our long-term well-being or just a quick fix? When your post gets a like or a share, it's like a mini celebration in your brain. Ding, you've been validated. But here's the funny thing. While these digital thumbs ups can give you a fleeting high, they're also auditioning for your attention, like a reality TV show contestant trying to win over the judges. This endorphin attention trade off in the social media arena can be quite the slippery slope. It's like playing a slot machine where the jackpot is a dopamine rush. Sometimes you might find yourself chasing the high of virtual approval, which can lead to an attention economy where your focus is the currency and everyone's bidding for it. Finding a balance here is key. Maybe it's about setting boundaries, like limiting your time on social media or focusing on creating content that fulfills you beyond the immediate gratification of likes and shares. After all, your attention is a precious commodity. Invest it wisely. Okay, but here's there's more to this picture that I want to share. So for example, um, say I'm shopping for a pair of shoes and suddenly I get um, a whole bunch of ads or things in my feed of a particular type of shoe that I'm looking for. Then I go shopping, I find the shoe, I find a great price, and all of a sudden, oh, I've got another endorphin hit again, regardless of whether I actually needed those shoes. Ah, the plot thickens with the twist of targeted advertising, turning our shopping journey into a veritable treasure hunt for endorphin hits. It's like those shoes aren't just shoes anymore. They're part of a grand quest designed by algorithms that know you better than your own shopping list. 
when those ads pop up, it's like the universe is conspiring to make your shoe dreams come true, nudging you towards that buy now button. And when you snag that deal, bam, another endorphin party and everyone's invited, except maybe your wallet. This scenario is like a dance between temptation and satisfaction, choreographed by data and algorithms. It's fascinating and a bit eerie how well the digital world can anticipate our desires, turning the act of shopping into an endorphin generating game where every purchase is a win. But here's a thought. What if we could hack this system for our benefit, like setting challenges for ourselves to resist impulse buys, turning it into a game where every resisted temptation is its own reward, or even better, finding joy in non-material wins, like learning a new skill or finishing a project. That way, we get to keep the endorphins flowing without the buyer's remorse lurking around the corner. It's all about outsmarting the system, right? Well, you've touched on another one of my hot buttons, so I love to learn. The problem is I could spend all my time learning and never accomplishing anything because I'm not applying what I'm learning. I found ways now to apply them, but for me, that's been a problem for a long time. Ah, the classic learner's conundrum. You're like a kid in a candy store, but instead of candy, it's knowledge, and every piece is just too tempting to pass up. It's fantastic to have a voracious appetite for learning, but when it turns into a buffet where you're piling everything onto your plate, it can get overwhelming. You, you end up feeling like you're preparing for a quiz show that, that never airs. The trick might be in turning that knowledge buffet into a more structured meal plan. Like, what if you treated your learning projects like a chef crafting a menu? You could pick a main dish, a big project or goal, and then select side dishes, skills or knowledge that complement and contribute directly to it. This way, you're not just stockpiling information, you're curating a feast that leads to a tangible outcome. Also, consider setting up a learning application day or time where the sole focus is on applying what you've learned in some small or big way. It could be as simple as a quick sketch to apply a new art technique or as involved as coding a small program. And think of it as your own personal show and tell where the joy comes not just from learning, but from creating something with that knowledge. It's like giving your brain not just the satisfaction of learning, but the thrill of seeing its creations come to life. <laughs> that is so true. Um, I really do have a lot of fun when I complete projects that people enjoy having and people enjoy learning from. So these are some huge benefits. I'm also enjoying learning so that I can create episodes for this podcast. To me, that is also a thrill. Absolutely. Turning your learning into content for your podcast is like hitting two birds with one stone, a perfect symphony of acquiring knowledge and sharing it in a way that resonates with others. Each episode becomes a showcase of your curiosity journey, not just for you, but for your audience as well. It's like you're, you're the captain of a ship of discovery and your listeners are the eager crew ready to embark on new adventures with each episode. Creating episodes that people enjoy and learn from is a testament to the magic that happens when passion meets purpose. It's not just about filling time, it's about enriching minds, including your own. And there's a special kind of joy in seeing the light bulb go off for someone else, knowing you had a hand in flipping the switch. So while the thrill of learning is, is a fantastic driver, the joy of sharing that knowledge and seeing its impact is an even greater reward. It's like planting a garden of ideas and watching them bloom in the minds of your listeners. What a beautiful way to apply what you've learned and create something that keeps the cycle of curiosity and discovery spinning. Absolutely. Now you touched on another item that I, I that I in your that I wanted to talk about, which is something about things that hold our attention. Uh, that we don't really want to hold our attention. You know, so many people, I, I was traveling recently and everybody has a cell phone in their hands and they're looking at them. Um, but the thing, the key phrase I hear so often is, oh, I'm just doing this to pass the time. As though it weren't okay to stop and look around and see what's going on. 
Um, maybe even smile at another person, talk to another person, but even just looking around is something other than your phone. You've hit the nail on the head. This phenomenon is like we're all in a trance with our smartphones as the modern day pocket watches swinging back and forth, hypnotizing us into believing that passing the time is the best we can do with our moments. It's as if the world around us has faded into the background and the vibrant screen in our hands is the only reality that matters. But here's a thought. What if we treated these moments as little pockets of opportunity, not just time to be passed? Like imagine turning a mundane waiting line into a mini adventure. Maybe it's observing the architecture, striking up a conversation with someone, revolutionary, right? <laughs> or simply watching the world go by and letting your mind wander creatively. Breaking free from the digital leash, even for just a few moments, can be incredibly liberating. It's like rediscovering the world in HD after watching everything through a low res screen. You might notice things you've never seen before, like the way light filters through leaves or the mosaic of stories playing out all around you. Encouraging this shift in perspective could be a great topic for your podcast, exploring the art of unplugging to truly connect with the world and the people in it. It's about finding joy and wonder in the ordinary turning every moment into a chance to engage with life more fully. Who knows? This might just be the gentle nudge your listeners need to look up from their screens and rediscover the world in all its unfiltered glory. And you know what? This is true, even for, as they say, weather watching. I mean, I've seen so much beauty in rain recently. Mind you, it was from inside a moving vehicle, not walking outside. Nevertheless, it was just, it was beautiful. I love seeing the lights shine in, in the different ways and how people were responding to the weather. It was um, really quite amazing. Absolutely, there's something mesmerizing about watching the world through the lens of weather, especially rain. It's like nature's own version of a filter, transforming the mundane into a scene from a moody, atmospheric film. The way raindrops dance on surfaces, the soft symphony of pitter-patter on the roof, and the shimmering lights reflecting off wet streets, it's pure poetry in motion. Observing how people react to rain is equally fascinating. Some dash for cover, Others embrace the downpour with open arms. And then there are those who pause to capture the moment on their smartphones, probably <laughs> to share on social media with a caption about rainy days and coffee. It's a beautiful reminder of how diverse our experiences and perceptions can be, even in something as universal as weather. This appreciation for the beauty and rain and the way it alters the landscape and human behavior could be a wonderful segment for your podcast. It speaks to the broader theme of finding beauty and intrigue in the everyday, encouraging listeners to adopt a more mindful and observant approach to life. Sharing your own experiences and reflections could inspire others to look at their surroundings with fresh eyes, finding joy and wonder in moments they might have otherwise overlooked. It's about celebrating the art of being present. And what better way to do that than through the universal experience of weather watching? Absolutely. And so many other things that we can be observing as well. So on that note, uh, I'd like to wrap up this particular episode of Permission to be Curious. I want our future episodes to, I want us to cover a whole lot more about attention and what we do with it and how there are so many snags and calls on our attention that actually many like me find extremely frustrating and even anxiety producing. But I don't want to cover that here. I want to cover that in my next podcast. Wrapping up with thoughts on attention and its many demands sounds like a perfect cliffhanger for this episode. It's a topic that resonates deeply in our always-on, notification-filled world. The idea of exploring the myriad ways our attention is pulled in different directions and the emotional toll it can take sets the stage for some compelling conversations in your next podcast. Diving into how these constant demands on our attention can lead to frustration and anxiety opens up a vast landscape of discussion. 
It's not just about identifying the problem, but also exploring solutions and strategies to navigate this cluttered attention economy more mindfully. Your next episode could be a beacon for those feeling overwhelmed, offering insights and tools to reclaim their mental space and find peace amid the chaos. It's a journey many will relate to, and your guidance could be the compass they need to navigate these choppy waters. Looking forward to seeing where this exploration takes you and your listeners next. Thank you, ChatGPT, and thank you, my listeners and dedicated fans, for joining me on yet another episode of Permission to be Curious. As always, if you like this episode, please do hit the like button. Yes, I know it's another attention notification. Um, But on the other hand, it also does push the algorithms to push it out to more people who might be interested in the same thing. So there are two sides to every coin, and that's another one of them. In the meantime, as always, be curious, go explore your world, and come back with more questions. Be well. It's been an absolute pleasure diving into these thought-provoking topics with you.